Hello all and welcome, my name is Simon Dan and I'm still here banging on about the Flat Earthers. Now, before we begin, I just want to say a massive thank you to all my subscribers. I've just passed the 100 subscriber count. So next week's video to celebrate will be a comments video where we can have a look at all the funniest comments I've had so far. But today we take on a guy called Martin Litka who runs a YouTube channel called Flat Earth British. Now, being a Brit myself, I'd just like to dissociate myself from him a little and say that I am English, born and bred in England. This guy's Welsh. I won't say any more on that matter. Having seen a few of his videos already, it's clear that he is a religious flat earther and for some reason has a real hatred for anything to do with space, almost to the point of disgust. You'll see what I mean. He also abuses those in the professional arena, such as Professor Brian Cox, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Bill Nye, etc, etc. You know, people that have devoted their lives for the betterment of humanity. Not the type that sit in their 1990s living room all day long, pretending to be busy. On this particular occasion, he's taken offence to the Voyager spacecraft and decides to pick the whole thing apart. Unfortunately for him, I've found his critique and, you know me, I've decided to show him the error of his ways. Let's kick this off. Now, six fascinating facts, fascinating facts, about fucking Voyager. There's your clue. If you didn't believe me about his utter contempt, you do now. This one is silly. So what they're saying, and we're going to look at Voyager 1 briefly and Voyager 2, okay? Now, they're saying that it's travelled out of the solar system and it's travelling into the heliosphere, which is out of the influence of our sun. The sun that they say is in the centre of this said solar system. Now, guess what, guys? The only image ever taken of the solar system was by that apparently, but listen to the circumstances behind it. See if it sounds like it's Disney or reality, shall we? Okay. I'm ready and waiting, although if this is going to go the way of your usual videos, I'll think you'll cry fake. I'll give you a chance though. Now, excuse me, I need drinkies. Uh. When Voyager 1 blasted off from Earth, and then plop back down in the sea. In um, on September the fifth, nineteen seventy-seven. I think I remember that day. Hang on, you remember an exact date from forty years ago? Hmm. Okay. It was designed to last for five years. Designed to last for five years. Let's see if any of that them words I just said sink in. Yep, I've got that. What's your point? Oh, because they are still going and NASA said they're designed to last five years, you think that means it's impossible. So hang on, if NASA said they only last five years, but you think everything NASA says is a lie, then surely you can't hold them to that. Either you believe them or you don't. Anyway, none of that is beside the point. Opticians say that glass is designed to last for ten years, but it looks like yours are a tad older than that. Mattresses are designed to last for eight years, but you can guarantee that a lot of people out there have a mattress far in advance of that estimate. I could go on. Just because something is designed to last for a certain amount of time, it doesn't mean that that is the strict lifespan of said object. A great example of is one-dimensional thought patterns, which will we see more of later. Designed to last for five years. Get it? Okay. Today, however, the space probe continues to communicate with NASA because they say it does. As it approaches the heliopause, the boundary between solar system and interstellar space, the farthest man-made object from Earth, Voyager 1, God, may keep exploring space for another 10 or 20 years before the power runs out. Meanwhile, check out these cool facts about the spacecraft and its mission. Now, guys, the trip in this is going to last five fucking years, all right? Now, Voyager 1 has an identical twin. In the early 70s, the National Aeronautics and Space Agency, NASA, um, one letter away from Nazi. Well, actually, that's two letters away, but who's counting? A little embarrassing. Well, Werner von Braun 
And what's it say on his gravestone, guys? Sam's, yeah, to do with the permanent. And why would the NASA Nazi scientist who makes up this bullshit have the, um, a, a saying to do with the Sam's and the permanent in on his gravestone? Hmm? Big clue, big clue. Anyway, I'm just saying that flat earthers know that generally. I do know that, but I get a lot of new people who may not know that. So, Grantor. Boy, you made a Grantor. Of Jupiter, Saturn, possibly Uranus, and <laughs> Neptune. Um, it went well. Mm. The agency, it's a bit like all of them Apollo missions, they all went well too, didn't they? Except that one when they needed a pair of socks and some sticky back plastic. And here's one we made earlier. So, the agency planned to launch a pair of unmanned spacecraft on a different trajectories uh, to thoroughly study the planet's from multiple angles. Voyager 1 and 2 are identical in construction. They weigh around 1,500 pounds. Each is equipped to conduct 10 specific experiments ranging from taking pictures to measuring atmospheric plasma concentrations. Um, each contains about 65,000 individual parts. Some of those components representing technology that might seem laughable. Now, but was cutting edge at the time, but a digital 8-track recorder <laughs> when it was launched in 1977. Sorry, guys. The article just said it might seem laughable as if it was launched in 1977, and he laughs. What at all? The Voyager was designed for five years' lifespan, but both outlived that projection by 30 fucking years. My ass, guys. My ass. Right. I just want to show you this bit about the freakiness of the recording. Listen to this. Hang on, hang on, hang on. The photograph. Check this out, guys. Its final act. To kill her. In its final act of photography, Voyager 1 snapped the only existing portrait of our solar system. Not long after Voyager 1 encounter was sat in 1980. NASA engineers turned off the spacecraft's cameras to conserve energy. Uh, for nearly a decade, the probe quietly flew uh, towards deep space. But as it approached the edge of the solar system, NASA engineers on the 14th of February 1990 instructed Voyager to turn its cameras back on, take a last look over its shoulder at the planet. In a series of 60 images, Voyager 1 returned to the only family portrait of our solar system, including the Sun, Venus, Earth, Jupiter, Saturn and Uranus. The photo mosaics depict, de, mosaics, you'll see why, depicts Earth as a small pale blue dot, a float, a vastness of space. You see what they're doing? Because the truth is, guys, it couldn't be more the opposite. Okay, this is voodoo, this is black magic, this is fucking bullshit, guys. This didn't turn its camera around, and... Do you think, in 1977's technology, it could send a signal back to Houston through, um, at this stage, the Kuiper Belt, um, the asteroid belt, okay, um, all of the debris, the planets, everything, and the journey that it took, which is like that, and all the planets and the sun and everything else is doing all different directions all at the same time. No such trajectory apparently, but apparently they can like sort of calibrate it so the, the, the beam will travel all the way back from um, outside the solar system and again in, in NASA. Sounds a bit fan fucking tastic, doesn't it? You clearly have no idea how big space is, do you? What makes me laugh is that he thinks objects in the Kuiper Belt and Asteroid Belt are right next to each other, but in actual fact there are gaps of hundreds of thousands of kilometres between objects. Coupled with the fact that Voyager uses radio waves to send the signals, which is a form of light, and light travels at an immense speed, it's really not that hard to see how it's done. We're talking about technology that was created in the 1890s. For something that was only designed for five years, guys. Oh boy. So they put a gold disc on it. Designed by Carl Sagan and this woman who he's got on there, who he's chatted up and married so he can get her on the track. The guy who wrote uh, Demon Haunted World, 
the guy who wrote pale blue dot. Now this is the whole point guys, they tell you we're on this pale blue meaningless dot. Them images are fucking bullshit, they get it in your consciousness, the you're meaningless, um, you get this nihilistic attitude, what the fuck, uh, you only hear the one smith will go for it, uh, sell out, yeah, 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 don't give a fuck for the plane. Nothing's important because of that fucking thinking guys, because they put it in there, deep, that's deep guys. That's just a seed. That's one of many seeds, guys, of our undermining. Our undermining of our consciousness and our reality, guys. Should we just give up our consciousness and consciousness, should we, guys, and just be bitches for fucking ever? Should we do that? Should we? Wow. Triggered. I would like to fundamentally disagree with you here. I'm an atheist, about as atheistic as they come. I'm a firm believer in the advancement of science and, by extension, the work we've done in discovering all we know about our universe. I have come to appreciate the wonder of life and all of our existence, and it's true that we are lost on a rock travelling through space with no real meaning. I've not murdered anyone, raped anyone, committed theft or arson, I don't engage in the taking of drugs, and I have never thrown a punch in my life. I consider myself to be eth ethically sound, and the morals that I live by are driven by the will to be a good, altruistic person. I don't need a magical sky fairy telling me if I'm not good I'll spend an eternity in a fiery wasteland. That's emotional blackmail of the worst kind. So, it's got science instrument boom, so we've got cameras for spectrometry. So they're only taking colour analysis and they splice, I take it, all those colours together and make a CGI copper set, even if it was real. Um, they just said they make mosaics, guys. The only way to do it with spectrometry, you think about it, they're taking colours of the spectrum um, with this theory and then they mosaic them in together and they're giving you a mosaic of a pale blue dot you are just making this stuff up as you go along aren't you i imagine to impress your subs it doesn't say camera for spectrometer it says camera and spectrometer you are literally making things up to suit your narrative it's almost as if i can hear the straws being clutched for. Cosmic ray detector. Whatever. Okay, better watch out for those CMEs, guys. Put you back to the Stone Age, don't you know? CMEs are coronal mass ejections from the sun. They pose a serious threat to our communications and electrical systems. Making light of this is just folly. Low grey antenna uh, star trackers. Vital, vital. Um, no. Radio isotope generators, guys. Radio isotope generators. Radio isotope generators. Saying it more than once won't make you understand what it is. And what is the fuel source? Is a radio isotope thermoelectric generator. Um, and apparently it was the last five years and it's still kicking out power and sending clear signals through what would be the Kuiper Belt now because it's less the Helosphere and the Asteroid Belt missing all obstacles, no problemo and landing the clear images and signal and data and mosaic words of mass spectrometry across the vast distances of space Is anybody buying this guys? Oh, maybe it's just me Unfortunately, it's not just you, but the 0.007% of flat earthers in this world shouldn't pose a threat to the collective intelligence of our species. Anyway, that's enough from this clown. I feel like I've exposed him enough. It's tragic what a man his computer can achieve. Thank you all for watching. I have been Simon Dan. Please like and subscribe for more of these videos, and I shall see you next time.